What's up guys, I am Everlight and welcome to Transportal in the studio with me, Everlight. Today's episode is all about vocals and vocal processing. I'm going to be looking at one of my favourite vocals that I've worked with in recent times and showing you all about how I got it to sound great and some of the things that you can do to get your vocals to sound great as well. So let's get stuck straight in. I'm jumping over to Ableton and I'll see you there. Okay, so here we are inside of Ableton and I have open in front of me one of my favorite tracks from my album, Lightspeed. This is Deep Down. Now, Deep Down, I'm super proud of because it has a wicked vocal in it. Um, so it's the perfect track for me to talk about processing vocals. So I'll give the track a little bit of a play uh, from so halfway through the verse um, so that you can get a little bit of hear a little bit of what the track's like. So there's a little example of what this track sounds like and what the vocal sounds like. So let's get stuck straight in in how to get a vocal sounding good in your trance track. Now the number one most important thing to remember before anything else is that the moment you add a feature vocal to your track like this, then that track now becomes a vocal track. That means that the vocal needs to be the clearest and most important element of that track that's because when a person an average listener a normal human listens to a song uh, they they're instinctually attracted their attention snaps to that vocal they try to listen to that above everything else so if you are mixing your track in a way where you're trying to make the leads sound louder than the than the vocal or if you're trying to emphasize other elements of the track instead of the vocal then all that's going to happen is those elements are going to be ignored and your vocal is just going to sound washed out so due to human nature you need to make sure that your vocal sounds super clean super transparent and is one of the clearest and most important elements of your mix. The best way to do that before we even get any vocal into the track at all is to make sure that you have a high quality recording that's been recorded in a decent music studio. Um, I didn't actually take care of the recording for this one. The very talented uh, vocalist Justin had his own music studio that did that, but his music studio has got treatment on the walls, similar to my studio here, and it has a decent quality condenser microphone which he recorded it on. The recording came over to me clean, it came over to me undistorted with very little reverb on it, and it had a very natural flat ear. EQ. Now that is important and you get that by recording in a room that has very little reverb so it's been treated um, and recording with a decent quality condenser microphone. Um, if you can do that then you're most likely going to end up with a good quality recording. By the way if you ever wondered what a condenser microphone is I actually have one here. Here's one I had over here. This is every, what I record everything on. Um, it looks like this. It's one of these ones um, and not the ones that you hold like that that's a dynamic microphone and they're for live uh, stuff but this is for acoustic recordings vocals acoustic guitars that sort of stuff and that is going to do the trick so once you've gotten your high quality recording into your track the first thing i normally do the first thing i normally take care of before i do any of the processing is auto tune and the thing that i use to auto tune my vocals is ceremony Melodyne. Now the version of Melodyne that you're seeing here is ancient. I think this this version of Melodyne is probably around over a decade old at least. It is completely obsolete. However, it does the trick. I got it once many many years ago and I have processed all of my vocals in all of my tracks over the last 10 to 15 years with this VST which is ancient. Um, but it works and it does the trick and the principles are still the same. Um, so how Ceremony Melodyne works is you record your vocals 
into the plugin it analyzes the uh, the pitch and the notes of it and then it brings it up on a piano roll like this and then from here you can simply drag and drop the notes uh, where you need them to be you can correct you can correct the pitch you can see this line this thread which kind of goes throughout all of the different uh, blobs there that is the note where the where the vocal currently is and you can snap that by using pitch modulation I'm just going to briefly quickly just run through all of this for you just to show you because there are way better and more in-depth guys on how to auto-tune vocals but I highly recommend using Celimony Melodyne it is one of the best for natural sounding auto-tune I still do this regardless of whether or not I can hear the vocal being mostly okay because Salomone Minodyne will reveal things that you that will make the track feel better make the vocal feel more in tune even if it sounds in tune so I will just go through every single recording that I have with a fine tooth comb I'll re record it all into Melodyne and I will make sure that every single little bit of vocal is on the right notes um, using the drag and drop here to, to make sure that's the case it makes a massive difference it is also super important if you have harmonies or backing vocals which we'll get to shortly once i have taken care of auto tune you render it out so that you've got your nice clean raw but tuned vocal recording and then the next thing to take care of is the timings of things so again what i do here is i take the vocal I, the vocal stem that we now have that's been auto-tuned, um, I cut it up and I place it into the arrangement. Um, and then I go into each individual uh, vocal bit and I use Ableton's warp modes to just gently correct uh, the vocals. So you can see here that originally that's what it looked like. Um, and originally that's what that looked like and um, so I was like I listened to the vocal and I thought hmm I could do with cleaning up some of the timings on that so I used Ableton's warp markers to do that the best uh, warp mode for vocals in Ableton is complex or complex pro they are perfect for vocals and depending on the texture and the tone of the vocal the vocalist that you're using um, one of those two will sound the best it is entirely up to you which one you use I would highly recommend avoiding any of the others as they will introduce noticeable artifacts uh, when warping with those methods so what you need to do then is just go ahead and make sure that all of your vocals um, are in tune uh, and in time once you've made any adjustments, little nips and tucks um, to your vocalist's timings inside the track, then you are ready to begin processing your vocal. Now, I imagine that the reason that a lot of new producers struggle uh, with using vocals or putting vocals in their track is because vocals are one of the very few times a new music producer is going to be dealing with external analog recorded material most of the time i'd wager to bet that a music a new music uh, producers studio is probably 90 to 100 percent software based it's 100 percent in the box it's on their laptop all the synthesizers are vsts and it, when you're dealing with externally sourced material like a recorded vocal the processing methods that you use are going to be very different because externally sourced material like a vocal or an acoustic guitar or a piano or anything like that if if you haven't if they haven't come pre-processed in a sample or anything like that they are wild they are unpredictable and they need a lot of nipping and tucking and nudging before they become usable and that is something that if you're dealing with just software instruments software digital vsts all that sort of stuff are super consistent in terms of their sound in terms of uh, their volume output and that sort of stuff all of those rules go out the window when you're working with a vocal and for that reason many new producers just simply don't know how to tame their vocal and how to get it to sit right within the mix that is full of digital instruments so speaking of taming then there are normally two ways to tame a vocal and to get it sitting right uh, the first one is with compression and the second one is EQ and first of all we're going to take a look at compression vocals can withstand a lot of compression before it starts to sound bad they can take an absolute battering and actually most of the time especially if you're trying to get that vocal the volume level of your vocal consistent and working within a, a track which is full of compressed digital instruments you're going to have to compress your vocal 
sparkle a lot in order for it to sit right. So what I actually have here is the effects chain um, for the main lead vocal. And I'm just going to show you all the different types of compression that I have on the channel here. The first one is Waves Arvox, which is basically just a one knob style uh, compressor uh, for vocals. And it looks like this. Um, this is super useful, although you don't have to use this. You can use a regular compressor, but all that this is doing is gently, first of all, evening out the levels of your vocal. If I wasn't going to use Arvox, if I was going to use a normal compressor, uh, let me give you a rough example of what the settings would look like. So I'll drag a new compressor on down here. I'm going to change the view to this. Um, you're not doing loads to it, so you probably want the ratio to be about between two and three. Let's use two and a half. Bring it quite down quite a lot, uh, and it would look roughly something like that. The next compressor that's on this in the chain is a multiband compressor. So it goes straight from the gentle compressor and into the multiband compressor. Now the multiband compressor serves two functions. It allows me to highlight the more pleasant frequencies within the vocal and kind of reduce the harsher frequencies there. Now you know. And now I'm going to turn it on. Now you know you seem to fight against this compressor is doing two things the main thing that the main two things that it's doing is you'll notice that the high frequencies down here are being compressed quite a lot so what that's doing is all of the zzz and the sounds are being leveled out to a nice tamed volume dynamic so they're not going up and going down spiking wildly and then you can see actually how much the compressor is working on that now you know you seem to fight against the flow and you'll notice that all of the sharp sounds like this and the f noises are being compressed more th than the rest of the vocal. So what that's doing is all of the harsh sounds are being squashed to a more desirable, pleasant uh, sound. And then I have got a massive boost on it. I've gone ahead and just ramped that up all the way to plus seven decibels. And the reason I've done that is because it provides a nice airy uh, quality to the vocal. So the next compressor in the chain is a glue compressor. This is very similar in a lot of ways to the first vocal compressor that we had on it. Um, this again is just taking the nice and polished vocal and just again reducing the dynamics even further. And then finally the last uh, compressor in the chain is actually a limiter and this is doing barely anything. Uh, this is just making sure that the vocal is never going above zero decibels and that just allows me more granular control when I'm doing the final mix down. So that's pretty much all there is to the compression side of things. Although before we move on to the next bit, which is EQ, I do want to reiterate just how important getting compression right is on your vocal. It will make or break the clarity of your vocal, um, which is why the main thing that you want to be looking at when you're dealing with compression is use lots of different types. So little compression, but quite a, quite a lot of it spread over a few different compression types. You can have, for me, I have a gentle compressor at the very beginning before anything else uh, then I have a multiband compressor compressor which is being used almost like an EQ to reduce the harsh frequencies and boost the pleasant ones um, and then I have got a another compressor just to even out the dynamics even more and then a limiter right at the very end so that is the general kind of layout for compression for me and it produces a more natural and less distorted result that's really going to boost the volume of your vocal and make it super consistent in your mix when you try and put it in with all the everything else. Now the good news is if you have a decent quality recording in a decent music studio and you have applied your compression correctly and you've used a good little bit of multiband compression then EQ is actually going to be super easy. You will do need to do barely any and as you can see here I have two only have two uh, EQ instances on this vocal. The one at the very beginning before anything else and what that's doing is it's got a bass cut on it to remove any rumble from the bass that might have been picked up by the microphone um, or that uh, or anything that's in there that you just don't want um, and then after the multiband compression there is another EQ uh, which is boosting the 1k frequencies uh, roughly around 1k is 
kind of nice to give it a gentle boost with a vocal because it brings out the presence of it a lot more especially with a male vocal um, and then i've got a a boost from 10k plus going right up to bring out sparkle and shimmer within the vocal and then that is it that is all there is for eq on this vocal believe it or not if at this stage you are needing to do all, all kinds of crazy eq cuts and boosts and all that to get it sounding good go back to the drawing board go back to your vocalist and say i'm sorry but we need another recording we need it in a better room we need it with another microphone it is not worth wrestling with a poor quality recorded vocal trying to fix it with eq it's just not worth doing for one simple reason like i said the vocal is going to have to be one of the most most important parts of your track it will be the thing that the listener focuses on the most and because of that we are used to as humans listening to vocals we know what they should naturally sound like if you're putting in all kinds of weird eqs on there you're going to make that that vocal sound very unnatural it's going to sound super obvious to even the most basic listener and it's going to sound really artificial and amateur so if you are having to mess around with eq too much go back to the drawing board record the vocal again let's talk about reverb delay and all the other fun effects that we can put on a vocal now vocals are one of my favorite parts to work with when working with a track because of how creative you can get with the with the types of effects you can use on them playing with a vocal in terms of adding effects and stuff like that can be a lot of fun um, in this case i wanted to try and keep the vocal nice and natural i wanted the strength of the vocalist to really come through so all i've done with this vocal is some reverb and delay so there are two vocals in this track the first one is the main vocal and the second one is a backing harmony which plays during the breakdowns during the chorus um, so i'm going to play a section of the vocal um, with both of them just soloed on their own don't think about it you feel it in your heart deep down you know what you gotta do you know what you gotta do so you can hear a lot of delay on there. You can hear a lot of reverb. There's lots of like a big atmosphere on that. But at the same time, it still sounds super pinpoint sharp. Uh, so let's talk about how I achieved that. So going back to the recording, when you recorded this vocal, hopefully you recorded it in a room that had very little reverb. But what that now means is that your vocal is going to be super dry. So we need to add in some reverb and keep it nice and controlled. Now, there are two types of reverb I add to a vocal. The first one is a room reverb and the second one is an effect reverb, um, like a big kind of hall. Now, what I do typically is I will add the room reverb directly to the vocal channel so here here it is here there is an instance of valhalla room on the main vocal and this is what it looks like super minimal 16.1 percent wet um, and very very short decay time there so it literally has 0.52 seconds half a second and all that is doing is making that vocal sound like it's in a room and um, it kind of take rather than the vocal sitting right on your forehead when you listen to it it just puts it back a little bit in the mix don't think about it you feel it in your heart deep Off. down you know what you gotta On. do you know what you gotta do next we can get creative with how we want the big reverb to sound and in order to do that i send the vocal to a send in this case i have another instance of valhalla room sitting on a send channel um which is here it's on send a um, and then i've got it here i will open valhalla room up uh, it's 100 percent wet and this time it's got a nice long tail which is nine seconds i'm going to go ahead and play that don't think about it you feel it in your heart deep down you know what you gotta do you can hear the nice tail on it there that's nice and atmospheric if you have a, have a keen eye you may have noticed that i have put some eq on the reverb and i've ducked out on the 1k range that's because like i mentioned before vocals are quite present within the 1k range so by putting a little bit of eq on the reverb just ducking out the 1k range a little bit what i've done there is i've allowed more room for the main vocal to sound present within the mix without the reverb muddying it up so we've taken a look at reverb the next thing to look at quickly is delay um, this is very similar to reverb 
subscribe i haven't actually i don't have any on the actual channel i have it going to ascend uh, which is this send send them the send e um, and it is a filter delay this time um, and this is very straightforward it doesn't have much on it there is some sidechain compression against the kick um, but not much else and i'll play it with everything turned on now this is the delay all the reverbs all the processing for the main vocal this is what it sounds like don't think about it you feel it in your heart deep down you know what you gotta do So the last thing worth talking about today is the processing on the vac backing vocals. Now backing vocals are processed more or less identically to the main vocal. If I go on the channel here and look at the chain, um, you can pretty much see that aside from uh, some minor difference in the EQ there, um, it's pretty much got all the exact same stuff on it. It's got its multiband compressor, it's got Arvox, it's got its glue compressor and limiter, etc. It's even got the little room reverb too. That's because I copy and pasted this chain from the main uh, processing vocal because it was all recorded in the same room on the same microphone the processing probably going to be roughly the same now the main difference with a backing vocal is that you can have some fun with some of the effects that you put on it. In this instance, I used two different effects. I use an auto pan. Um, and now what that does is it makes the vocal wobble from side to side within the stereo field. And then I also used a Waves Doubler. Waves Doubler is a house effect plugin. Makes it sound way wider in the mix. I'll show you, I'll turn it off and then I'll turn it on. So this is with it off. Don't think about it. You can hear the auto pan wobbling in it there, but as soon as I turn this on, you're going to hear the wobble still, but it's going to be way wider. Don't think about it. And the benefit of having a backing vocal which has got some width in the stereo field as opposed to sitting narrow like the main vocal is that you have your main vocal front and center in the mix and then you've got the backing vocal providing a bit more background atmosphere it takes up room within the stereo image underneath the main vocal and it produces a very nice effect obviously the vocalist has sung, sung some awesome harmonies for this track and that's pretty much it but before i go let me just play the main section of this track because i love it it's one of my favorites from the album Guys, that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for watching Transportal in the studio with me, Everlight. I hope you've learned a little bit about vocal processing today. And don't forget to check out all of the other episodes of Transportal in the studio with. Subscribe to the Transportal YouTube channel and follow us on all of our socials as seen on screen now. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you all again next time.